You're watching NewsX. My name is Vineet Malhotra, and you are obviously tuned into that uh, special slot in association with the business world, where we talk about Atmanirbhata and a lot of other issues which are doing the round when it comes to the Indian economy. Well, things are not hunky dory at this point in time. A lot of challenges coming about every now and then pertaining to business, the economy, and how trade and demands is supposed to go up. But uh, obviously, we've been doing this uh, for a while now, and uh, we have uh, been at the receiving end of a lot of good ideas. Obviously, some criticism has also come from uh, certain avenues, and they feel that the government perhaps could have done more. What does the panel in today's show feel? We'll talk about that. We'll get into some uh, granular details all also as to what these ideas are all about and what more can be done, not only from uh, the government's point of view, but from uh, our point of view as well. If you are to be Atmanirbha, that it, it doesn't mean that you have to look to the government to give you solutions. Perhaps you can come up with the solution and then look to, look to the government for some sort of a support or motivation. So let's get into uh, you know the deep end of this conversation. Joining me on the panel is uh, Mr. Srikant Shastri. Chairman of I3G Advisory Network, Mr. Aditya Mishra, founder and CEO of Amorka, Mr. Subha Rao, founder and CEO of Leo Partners, Mr. Akshay Chaturvedi, founder and CEO of Leverage Education, Ms. Gayatri Bhatia, founder and MD of Saucery Foods Private Limited, Mr. Devashish Bhattacharji, co-founder and CMO of Pocket52.com, and last but not the least, my partner in crime, Dr. Anurag Batra, who's going to help me out with uh, uh, you know, certain aspects of the show, Chairman and Editor-in-Chief of uh, Business World. Uh, Mr. Srikant, if I can start with you. you know, this is a question which has become customary to these sessions, but uh, let me, in fact, re-tweak it today. Uh, the stimulus package was announced a few weeks ago. Uh, it uh, blew hot. It blew cold. A lot of people felt that the government was perhaps... Uh, extremely experimental with the way the economy needs to be revived. A lot of other people on the other scale of uh, that bipolar unit felt that the government was in fact being uh, uh, very outgoing by giving away 20 lakh worth of contingent liability loans to MSMEs. Where do you stand on this? And do you think this periphery that India finds itself in alongside with the world economy is going to change anytime soon or is this the new normal? So, Vineet, I'll give you a very honest answer to your customary question. Uh, my own opinions have fluctuated wildly over the last several weeks because, like everyone else, I get influenced by what I read in the media and what I hear from my friends. And those opinions, like everything else today, is so sharply polarized that I've been absorbing both sets of opinions. Uh, just to take an example, uh, one opinion is that it's a gigantic confidence trick being played on a desperate public with money that does not exist. That's one viewpoint. On the other hand, there are viewpoints that are positive, which say that, look, we're as good as what any other developed country has done, not just the 10%, but also mm -hmm. we've been cautious. We've spent money on things that matter, poorer sections, healthcare, supporting small businesses, and variety of other support like tax reforms. And we've been cautious about not throwing money away. We've been, and every other, people have misunderstood and said, is cash being given out? No, it's not just about cash being given out. It's about making available money for things that matter at this point of time. So finally, when I sat back and looked at these two sets of extreme opinions, I said, look, I'm going to look at data points the real test for me is, is this money or benefit percolating down? So I looked at two areas which I'm familiar with. One is MSMEs, second is startups. Now, let's take MSMEs, and you also alluded to that. Uh, Three lakh crores of emergency credit line to give working capital, 50,000 crores of equity infusion through a fund of funds. Now, I have anecdotal evidence. I have many friends who are MSME owners. And I'm hearing from them, both in Delhi and smaller cities, that they're actually getting the money. In some cases, the bank managers are calling them and saying, would you like a line of credit? To me, that is real outcome. Likewise, I engage with hundreds of startups, and there was originally criticism that there's nothing for startups in the stimulus package. But there's one significant change that the government made. They changed the definition of MSME. So today, 
many startups can register as MSM, MSMEs and get the same collateral fee loan, which was otherwise not available to them. And this, to me, is real benefit. I, I was not surprised when one of the newspapers, New Indian Express, published a survey which said 71% of Indians agree or agree strongly that the relief package will lead to economic recovery. So that's where I stand. Shikhan, I just want to ask a follow-up question while we go to everyone. Shrikant, you've been an entrepreneur, you sold your business, and you invested in businesses. Now, there is a real worry, while the two scenarios you mentioned are real, that a lot of startups' revenues have gone down to zero in certain sectors, uh, whether it's QSR, whether it's travel, every sector that is a contact-led sector. So, And also the funding hasn't come through. So if there are no revenues, if there is no funding, uh, there is a worry that a lot of startups may not survive the next 60 days. How real is that worry? You know, that worry is real. But I, I, the, I'm on the boards of several incubators and I've done Zoom calls with hundreds of startup founders who are worried. They're worried, but I saw in them a certain amount of grit and boldness which said, we shall overcome. That is one. And it's not just a hollow claim. A lot of them have pivoted to gear up for the new world. And if you give me two minutes, I'll give you a simple formula that I think is really going to be transformational uh, in this context. The short story is that over the last, so one such uh, startup was in the robotic space and they were facing real death when the lockdown got declared. But they transformed and said, you know what? We're going to make a world-class ventilator for India uh, that does not exist. And a bunch of us got together to take them from idea to manufacturing in under three months. And that ventilator is now ready to, it's been certified, tested, approved. It is ready to take on the world. And that story to me is a story of how startups will overcome this. They will pivot. They will get mentored by a completely new breed of people. Government was willing to support with a variety of grants while conventional VCs held back their money. Corporates are willing to come forward and support with CSR. And suddenly, you know, the big thing was this startup gave a manufacturing license to two MSMEs and one PSU whose idle capacity started getting filled up through manufacture of 1,000 ventilators. So here for me is the real Atmanirbhar Bharat. You had a startup who re reflects Startup India. The startup is called Noka Robotics. They started working with MSMEs. That, so they connected with MSME India. They started manufacturing in India, which is Make in India. So Startup India plus MSME India plus Make in India together has now created Atmanirbhar Bharat and they've created 100 jobs. I can see every startup working with the government, with MSMEs and others to actually transform themselves. So I am filled with a lot of hope and confidence, Anurag. Thank you. Okay, uh, so all right, Mr. Aditya Mishra. Story, you know, yeah. stories can inspire other people to do similar. Absolutely, and and Anurag, we've we've had uh, you know uh, different uh, opinions on the same platform where uh, people have spoken about not being able to get loans from banks. You know, forget about st uh, state-owned banks. They have also spoken of private banks uh, not extending them any kind of loans. Uh, Mr. Aditya Mishra, if you can hear me, where where do you stand on this? Uh, uh, should we be worried or should we be optimistic? Should we be, in fact, uh, be taking this uh, nudge that, uh, you know, uh, that COVID-19 has given us uh, something that can capitalize, you know, monetize and, uh, you know, take the economy further. And the Atma Nirbharta concept, which the Prime Minister has also promulgated on a number of occasions, also is perhaps in the same breath. Sure, so I think... Uh number of things. So first thing that you mentioned is that uh, banks are actually not giving out money. So yeah. uh, I'm not an expert on MSME. We work a lot in the home loan side. And I can tell you that it's actually easier on the PSU bank side compared to the private bank side. So there has been a tightening of credit norms. So certain parts we have seen that they continue to get tightened. So which means that uh, same income ratios that used to get you a loan earlier don't get you a loan anymore. In fact, there are cases where uh, loans have been sanctioned and those sanctions have been revised downwards or the customer has been told, look, you can't get a loan. And that lands the customer in a difficult situation because he's already made a down payment uh, 
or a property against an earlier sanction letter. So that tightening is certainly uh, hurting a segment of the uh, customer base. So I think that's a uh, given. The good thing is that on the PSU bank side, we don't see a similar tightening. In fact, uh, interest rates are at their lowest in the probably last 20 years. So if you look at it, uh, you can get a loan of even let's say 5 crores, 2 crores, 1 crore, any amount or as low as 6.9%. So affordability has really gone up and you see that it's a PSU banks which are out in the lead, which are uh, giving out these loans. So that part has actually improved. Now, coming to uh, Atmanirbha Bharat, I think there is a stimulus and there's a thought that is going on right now. I think there is a lot more that needs to be done before we get to a place where we can say that we have even the base ready for it. So, uh, some of the examples that we have already talked about are really early about it. I think we need to think systematically about it. And uh, while the government has come out with certain things like credit guarantee scheme, which uh, a one side protects their own balance sheet at least uh, uh, at least from the face of it though there is i think a risk that they will get it later uh, on the other hand it's probably not doing enough for a lot of people so uh, i think the next phase of that is to i think they really need to pick up certain areas and say that look this is where we really need to uh, build up supply chains so today if i look at it uh, your auto supply chain in india is fairly strong uh, where we are lacking is essentially on the battery side and given the global situation there is a entire feeling that we shouldn't be sourcing from China and that's not just in India it's there in the US as well. I think that's where <coughs> government needs to come out with measures which support the formation of that industry and the rest of the auto industry combined can kind of uh, uh, take a step towards uh, being part of the global supply chain. Similarly, on the semiconductor side, you could have a entire investment, a lot of uh, uh, push that is coming from the government to get things going. If you look at China, uh, part of the reason why China dominates a lot of manufacturing is because they invested in that area. And today, they are far though ahead. Get, than it, though, the, though it gets manufactured in Taiwan, uh, and you know, one of the reasons you see the American troop uh, movement in uh, the rim, in the Asia Pacific rim, is because the Chinese, uh, you know, suspect that the Americans have told the Taiwanese not to give them the semiconductors and the material associated. Because that semiconductors run the world, the chips run your phone, they run your power, the yeah. whole. So seven manufacturing locations in uh, Taiwan produce 90% of what is produced in the world. So right now, Americans' uh, warships are protecting that Taiwanese against the Chinese. South China Sea, yeah. Yeah, yeah, South absolutely. China. Uh, you're right, semiconductor. So we'll come back to you on one particular thing on demand. When you look at the, uh, even the housing loan segment, when you look at the uh, data that is coming out in terms of home buyers, give us the trends from April till June. Oh, okay. Demand totally disappeared. Okay. Uh, I think let's, uh, there's, there's no two ways about it. And we ran all kinds of data. And I think there's a bit of data that's fairly publicly available. You look at Google Trends. The other thing that we looked at is that you look at the region side. So what's the journey of a customer of a house? We even start by saying that, hey, let me figure out what's available in the market. So somebody buying in Kandivali, he will go do a search on Google, then he will end up on uh, housing.com, 99 acres and all that. And then from there, he will shortlist something, he will visit, and then he will kind of try and shortlist and then finally buy. Uh, if you look at the data, that uh, number shows very clearly that uh, where you are in February, there was a 60% fall into April. But from there onwards, at least on the traffic side, there has been a bounce back. So you are almost back at the March level if you look at the June data. It's still not back to where you would want it to be. It's not back at 100%, but it's almost back at 90%. So very clearly, if you look at that data, there is a V-shaped recovery that's uh, already in process. What do you attribute that, that people are wanting to buy new homes? Because millennials have re realized that they need to spend a lot of time in their homes. So for the first time, they're spending more time at homes and they feel that they should invest in it. Or they save so much money that they're investing in it. What is your hypothesis on that? No, my hypothesis is this, that there was a continuing momentum that got interrupted. All we are seeing is that there is a resumption of it. Uh, uh, I don't think we should read more into it. I think there are interesting trends that are there. So if you look at Bombay, 
uh, what's selling more is let's say in a virar or a kalyan and if you look at let's say the numbers that godrej properties for example uh, reported a lot of those sales have actually happened uh, let's say for them in kalyan and uh, i think that's also a part of the or low end of the housing for self use is being um, picked up you know that's seeing an uptake in the month so we'll come back so uh, let me add Aditya, we have some 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 problem with the audio there. We'll go to Mr. Subha Rao now. Whoever you want to bring in, right, Mr. Rao, if you can hear me, sir. Yes, I can. Well, more or less, the question remains the same. The uh, challenge is to get the demand back, and uh, you know, the idea is also to uh, reignite uh, the sentiment of the consumer. What what kind of a challenge? And is the it? and the forecast for enterprises because. Mr. Rao, you're on the recruiting side. You recruit, so jo jobs is a good barometer yeah. of economic activity. If these right. jobs are being created, that means economic activity is happening. Tell us, how do you see the economy going forward? We know in the last few months there has been a lot of jobs, both in the formal sector and in the informal sector, that have gone away. What is your outlook for jobs in the next three to six months? Mr. Rao, yeah, one second. I think I lost. We can hear you loud and clear, sir. We can hear you loud and clear. You can respond now. Yeah. One <laughs> Mr. Rao, are you ready? We can't hear you. We'll come back to you, Mr. Rao, if you're not okay. ready. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's let's, let's come yeah. back to you uh, in sorcery. Uh, you know, you found your sweet spot or a silver lining in this dark cloud. Tell us, uh, as an entrepreneur. Does the economic stimulus mean anything to you? Where do you see the economy going? What are the consumer habits that have changed for permanent, and what are the consumer habits that are only temporary uh, and will possibly go back to old ways when COVID is gone? So, I mean, of course, when the economic stimulus package was announced, it was welcome news after almost two months of complete uncertainty, right? Um, the focus that has been given to MSMEs with the 20 lakh um, collateral free loan, 20 lakh crore collateral free loan, <coughs> uh, sorry, 20,000 crore collateral free loans and the 3 lakh uh, crore credit line has obviously been beneficial to MSMEs across the board. However, I think the question really arises whether the objective of the package is being met in terms of the people and organizations that it was meant to benefit. So, um, you know, despite such a large stimulus package for the MSME space, we've seen that over 70% of startups have actually been really badly hit and 12 to 15% of startups have actually even shut down. And I personally am aware of a lot of startups which have actually shut down as well. So I know of their stories. For us, of course, we found ourselves, you know, in a sweet spot where given that we are from the packaged food industry, consumption patterns have changed dramatically and there's been a significant shift in demand as people are um, consuming more packaged foods in the comforts of their own home, right? So this is actually a golden opportunity for businesses like us where there's been a massive organic increase, increase in demand and given we are a natural product, we're actually perfectly positioned to be one of the greatest beneficiaries of the new macro environment and also to restructure our demand and reach directly to the consumer to cut out the middleman. So overall, this is a great opportunity for us to, you know, relook at the way our balance sheets and our PNL um, is currently structured, where our revenue contributions are coming from also. And as I mentioned, increase the savings in our own organization by cutting out the middleman, which usually typically takes a very fat chunk of a margin. Um, even large-scale established companies in our space of you know, packaged foods have seen over a 120% increase in their retail sales despite deep penetration across the country. So I'm extremely bullish about our specific sector um, and about the current times. However, there is there are two challenges rather which are yet to be um, fully addressed. Firstly, the supply chain struggles still exist across the board as um, transportation has still not fully come back on its feet. So even whether we're talking about, so given that we manufacture fresh sources, we deal with a lot of farmers, right? So farmers are not actually able to transport their fresh produce to our factory locations, which is becoming a bit of a challenge, although, you know, we, we are finding our way around it. 
Uh, and the other issue which ties back into the stimulus package also is with regards to working capital. So even though we have splurging demand at present, we do require uh, the capital to cater to that demand. Um, receivable cycles have also been badly damaged at this point, Absolutely. which is, you know, which is a bit of a concern for us, especially. And you, and you don't know the quality of your receivable. You'll possibly know that in the next 60, 90 days. Uh, so I understand uh, running an enterprise. I know where you're coming from. I yeah. think we'll come back to you. Akshay, uh, you represent a sector that has really exploded. The edtech sector has benefited possibly the most in the pandemic. Right. Uh, as parents, uh, you know, we know that edtech is the lifeline to our children. So tell us, right. uh, as an entrepreneur, what do you make of the stimulus package and where do you see the Indian economy going? Well, sure. First of all, uh, Anurag and Vinny, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, absolute pleasure. Uh, good to see you, Anurag, after a long time. Uh, no, I, I, let me kind of divide my uh, uh, revert to this into broad comments, two broad comments. Uh, first one about where we are in the macro, uh, uh, in line with I think what Vineet asked right in the beginning. Uh, I think uh, India, we have to recognize the fact that India is a developing economy. And if we look at things from that lens, I think we have done a fantastic job. Uh, uh, be it with the similar sums of uh, making sure that the economy does not go, does not completely tank down. Uh, if you look at what's happened with a bunch of other countries out there, uh, if you look at any other developing country, uh, if you would compare an Apple to Apple macro data, you can clearly see the difference. Uh, so, of course, our aspirations as Indians are, uh, we, we want Moon and Mars and Venus and whatnot from here. Uh, but if we really compare the data, I think we have done a really good job uh, and kudos to the government for that. So, I sit on that other side of the debate. Uh, that said, of course, uh, there is a lot more that can be done. Uh, and I think we're learning around it. Uh, every few weeks, we see that uh, there is another announcement. Uh, and I would rather see it as a fact that this is a government that is observing what is happening globally, that is observing the data that is essentially uh, coming on directly from the ground, uh, from and constantly improving uh, what can be done and what can't. Uh, coming down to the word of startups, uh, uh, I think, of course, uh, when the lockdown began uh, sometime in March, April, uh, there was a negative sentiment for sure. Uh, but I think that's completely been quenched out given uh, the demand that we have seen. So, so I'm on, again on the opposite side here. Uh, we, li li like you know, we run a college admissions company, Leverage Edu, uh, consumer uh, making money from students and parents. And uh, we've essentially seen a revenue grow, our monthly revenues grow by 100% uh, between the, from previous three months to now. And uh, in fact, we have put out uh, 100 plus job openings earlier last week. So we are, of course, uh, I understand there are some sunrise areas and there's some sunset areas, but uh, given that we have been in an area which is uh, essentially Look, sunrise. Studying, studying and watching movies. <laughs> <laughs> with, uh, you know, no, of course. With correct, correct. So, so, so that is about largely my space. Uh, I, we see that students are very keen. Uh, to go out and continue with their education. Uh, of course, uh, given the fact that we are an online company, it has given us a great chance to catch up with our brick and mortar peers. Uh, I love this quote where you, uh, this quote that says that you can get, get ahead of the car in front only when it's raining. And in our case, it's pouring. So it's ah. given us a great chance to get ahead of all of these brick and mortar cars who were out there in front of us. And, and, and that, just to kind of wrap up uh, some comments, uh, I wanted to revert to them about the startup area per se. Uh, again, I think, uh, uh, and again, maybe my comment has a bias uh, given the education space, uh, but I think the working capital lines, the loans, uh, the funding, uh, I think all of those are available and the sentiment has largely improved for all areas in the last 15 to 20 days. Uh, the venture community largely is done by sentiment. Uh, you don't essentially see it mirroring the public uh, sentiment, the, the public equities. You don't see it mirroring everything that is happening out there in the world. Uh, be it a war, uh, be it no, the, 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 the correlation between the, down, market uh, the, the community the works very differently. The whole debate by itself, and we still don't have a absolutely on what. But yeah, yes, let's, let's, America, absolutely. there is a. You look at the Dow yesterday. In America, there are signs, there are green shoots of absolutely yes. Uh, look at uh, uh, the valuations of some of the tech giants in the last two days. They're coming back to their peaks. So I think there is uh, some demand coming there. And of course, the sectors that you mentioned and the sectors represented on this panel uh, have done well. So coming back to Subarao, uh, Subarao, yeah, how do you see the economic uh, stimulus and 
uh, jobs, as I said, is the right barometer for looking at the economy. Where are we headed? Okay. Well, uh, good evening, to all the members on the panel, and uh, thanks, Anurag and Neet, uh, for having me here. Uh, see, as we know, uh, I mean, the stimulus package, which was announced by the government, is, of course, a pretty welcome sign. And of course, uh, but uh, you know there are a lot many people who actually have taken it as a mixed bag. Though uh, some people say you know it has to basically percolate into you know uh, what exactly accrues to a certain beneficiary. But nevertheless, I would say that the sentiment is positive, and people today would know that you know when we're talking about the you know, government, specifically talking about say MSME, you know there's a three lakh collateral free. You know, loans available there. Available means I mean, it's, it's not cash, as one of the panel members has rightly said. But you can avail of that if you follow a proper channel. You know, so now the government has got a little liberal, and uh, the, the you know, if you follow the latest report, post the stimulus package, the sentiment. When I was reading the you know uh, latest FICA report, the sentiment is certainly positive. And Mr. Akshay Chitrangadi has rightly said, you know, he belongs to one of the sunrise sectors. And today, as we all know, many of the, I mean, I'm actually mixing up the jobs. And you know, if you look at, there are many industries who are, you know, uh, let's say, badly hit. Uh, and there are many industries who suddenly started doing very well. I mean, uh, today, if we talk about the core sector, see, I, from the, see, we are an executive search company. We typically, you know, help uh, corporates get. That talent from the mid to the CXO level, uh, but if you look at the scenario overall, also the core sector got badly hit. I mean, we were, if you talk about core engineering sector, say automobile sector, and when you say automobile, it's a huge chunk which actually affects the rest of the other sectors also. And are you? And the worst hit is again is you know automobile and sleepers. If you talk to anybody today, they say our hiring, our recruitment are freeze for next six months. What happens is that. Any any market sentiment going down, the very first casualty happens to be recruiting. Because it, I, it might come. be first is travel, second is advertising, and third yes. is recruitment. In my recruitment. Uh, oh, but the thing I keep saying, we need that in good times you should advertise. In bad times you must advertise. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that one. Another, just to add to that point, you know, I'm talking about what. You know, a government or for that matter, uh, you know, everybody who is in a public domain should need is. You talked about advertising. I would say uh, it's a common norm in the corporate world. Everybody knows that in the peace time you have to communicate effectively. In the war time like this, you have to over communicate. Sure, I agree with you. I agree. So what happens is time uh, what, being connected, being compassionate, absolutely, caring, being communicative. I mean, I have three hundred colleagues that I work with, and I, I keep saying this shall pass. Let's uh, go to the last panelist, uh, Mr. Devashish. Devashish, uh, you again come from a sector that has seen some impact. What are your opening views on the uh, stimulus package, and where do you see the economy going? Uh, I'll, I'll basically come back to the question, but I'll, I'll basically pick up from uh, where what we are experiencing, and especially I'll go ahead with uh, what Akshay had mentioned that we are in the sunrise sector. Rather, in our industry, I would say that the sun never sets in the in the gaming sector. That's what we have experienced. <laughs> that's that's how I would put it. Okay, and uh, and and recently, what we have experienced that Pocket Fifty to my company has become world's fourth largest poker company. Oh. And this has happened for the first time uh, by an Indian company, which it is there. And I believe a lot of you panelists must not be even aware of what exactly poker is. Uh, that is one part of the story. The second part of the story here is that like we uh, today, I saw a, like a media article uh, where is in like Airtel and Reliance, like even they are coming into the real money gaming sector uh, because everybody is seeing how things are working. Like you see, seven hundred uh, million hours like being consumed by Indian gamers. Mm -hmm. Now we believe that we are the next uh, movie sector. The gaming sector is going to be the next OTT. It's going to be the next entertainment. It's going to be the next wafer thing. It's going to be the next discussion, and that's how like gaming is going ahead. And how it is happening, like people playing Ludo. Like I do not even represent Ludo. Uh, my I, mother. I read the stats. People playing Ludo online. <laughs> my mother called me a few days back and told me that uh, just install the Ludo King app and let's play Ludo together. Mm -hmm. And she stays in Guwahati. I stay in Bangalore, and that, that is how the things. <laughs> Love it. And, and, and and that is a very beautiful way of putting it things together. But yes, our industry, the gaming industry, uh, I represent a, a different version of the industry. That is the real money gaming industry. 
and uh, it's been uh, like DJ, right? I'm I'm sorry. Could you just repeat? I, you yes. you also call real money gaming fantasy? Uh, yeah. sir, fa- fantasy is mostly into whereas in like uh, you would call the cricket part of it, which is badly been hit. But uh, we represent the strong real money gaming sector. Which... Clearly, I don't play poker. I don't play any fantasy game. But I start playing. <laughs> but I want to ask you: Are your consumers paying for the games? Are you getting enough advertising? I want to focus on the business side. For example, in media, uh, while the viewership of all news channels, including NewsX, has grown, uh, the revenues are not not commensurate, uh, except platforms that are only digital. So. are you seeing also an uptake in the revenues or it is only traction in the number of users we are in the middle of this special show in association with the business world devashish before we took a break uh, you were on the verge of answering anurag's question but i interrupted you now is your turn to in fact to respond to that very interesting question that you asked thanks vinith like uh, thanks for getting me back uh, so i'll basically start with uh, a very important keyword in the real money gaming sector or in the gaming sector it's all about liquidity and which means like if i if i break it in a very basic way it's that how many people are playing on a platform at that particular moment otherwise nobody would come and play it's as simple as that so in our case we are india's first company we came up with a new concept called network in that network uh, we have clients like mpl like calling station nostra gamers they are all in our network we have powered them with the software what happens is that people from their platform and our platform they can all play synchronized at a same point of time so at a point of time when we made our software one year back around hundreds or uh, 500 people would play now you would see around 5000 3000 to 5000 players playing real time and it's all happening uh, happening at a synchronized position and what we have seen with regards to our like growth like we have grown by 20 to 30% especially during this particular time and uh, one day somebody came to me and said that okay do you know that you are india's number one i said how then they showed me a particular panel and they t- told me that this is how they see the real real time things and we were awestruck and uh, while coming back to a certain situation like i'll just a little uh, divert from the situation it's very hard today especially for entrepreneurs like akshay and me like at our level at our stage at our age when we open linkedin it's flooded with people who wants to take up a job and it's very very tough every day to handle such situations but we are accommodating even people who may not impact right now at this particular situation but yes we are accommodating them and we are trying to scale it up now well well coming down to the government policies and government doing a lot of other things definitely but uh, as a gaming association we haven't seen uh, like uh, connects right now happening at this particular moment because it's a little complicated and it's a little controversial i would say so that's all how i can summarize mr anurag as of now yeah, but i just want to ask you are you also seeing revenues one is user traction are you seeing revenue in terms of advertising or if the games are paid tv in uh, see i'll i'll say in our sector like uh, basically uh, the advertisements like i'm talking about the paid model that we are doing like uh, after doing so we have seen good amount of growth in that particular section but uh, what we have realized is that our revenue is not soaring but going like it's bumping up as i told you 20% for the traction uh, maybe i'll meet you one day and i'll tell you the percentage one on one but as of now i can definitely say that yes it's skyrocketing and sun is not setting here sun so is there at the back good to hear such stories because these give us hope and they tell us that we have entrepreneurs who can for india in india whether it's in a service sector or in that we coming and, back to you Uh, again uh, like uh, anurag just last thing i would like to conclude my perspective here is that it is a request to all the panelists and people who are also watching if you know people who are looking for job and uh, they can they can just get in touch with us like uh, we are always ready to help them and understand because we are from the gaming sector we have network, it's a very good thing and i will personally you. send you 5 ten gb that i will like thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much what is mean but uh, that's another Uh, discussion guys we coming to you since you are in the consumer uh, and let's say food segment uh, tell us uh, some demand is a given what are you doing as an entrepreneur that is getting you that delta uh, of course we know that brands like yours are a d2c a direct to consumer and maybe you will be part of the prime minister's vision of being you know farm to fork so to say so tell us what's happening in your sector and what does it offer for the agriculture sector 
because we are the largest producer of food grains in the world. Uh, and there are two tweaks that the uh, government has done in terms of one. Um, now you can sell your produce in any market. There's one market. And second is in terms of making sure that the government is working with farmers to make sure that they're able to get better prices. Uh, the first one is, so tell us what's, how will your sector contribute to the growth of GDP? So um, in our sector, in the f and in the food processing space rather, we've, as I mentioned already, we've seen a lot of increase in organic demand in any case. Um, we are actually- so Because people are not going out and they're eating at their homes. Exactly. So people, there's just been a shift in demand. Most people believe that most uh, F&B packaged food products are seeing an absolute increase in revenue. However, this may not necessarily be true simply because a lot of processed foods actually rely significantly on Horeca, which is hotels, restaurants and caterers for to be their main revenue channel. At this point in time, however, given the macroeconomic situation where most restaurants and hotels have actually chosen to stay shut even where they have been given permissions to reopen that entire revenue channel is completely paralyzed for now so to cover that delta of you know whatever revenue you were originally pulling from your hotels your restaurants your caterers your other institutional sales um there have been there's been a lot of innovation in terms of reaching the market in terms of the distribution networks that have been employed so to give you an example uh, we are we ourselves are actually at this point engaging uh, with a multi, well, a pan India company which um, has deep distribution throughout every metro city, about 40 cities in India at this point actually. Um, but they are not from our industry. So this is a cross industry tie up which we're doing where we're leveraging their distribution network to be able to reach consumers across the country. So as long as entrepreneurs are able to identify... So it's not just D2C, it's an omni-channel uh, approach exactly. that you are taking. Exactly. So we're extending ourselves from not, we were never just B2C, but we were also, you know, we, we do supermarkets, we do hotels, restaurants, etc. Now drink. we're also extending that to say, you know, for example, making our product available through a fashion e-tailer, right? Now, if you're available through a fashion e-tailer, typically people may not necessarily think that food would be available on uh, a fashion e-tailer. However, we were still able to see demand coming through from there. And more importantly, we're able to access markets which we are otherwise not able to access given our own limitations of cold chain and whatever else. So uh, I think interesting tie-ups is what really is the need of the hour. Um, on, entrepreneurs really need to be focused focused on just getting their product to the market, especially in the F&B space, because I think the demand is still there um, and the demand is massive. And like I said earlier, it's only shifted right from the institutions to direct home um, purchase. Uh, uh, just to understand, is the average size of an order grown in the last few months? And if it's grown by how much? Absolutely, we've seen the average, uh, the average order ticket growing from say, you know, two units from a direct to consumer perspective, two units per order to sometimes even eight units an order, 10 units an order. Well, the actual average has grown from two to about 8.6. But um, that by itself means, you know, that customers are basically getting on, for example, when they purchase directly from our own website or any of our uh, online partners, they're, they're purchasing the entire range that we have available. So, so they're just stocking up. It's a bit of a hoarding mentality, but it works fantastically well for us. And people are able to utilize the products fast enough. And this is being seen for not just sources companies, but also say, you know, packaged rice, different types of pastas, different types of uh, beverages also because people are just consuming at home now and they're looking for uh, that tells you that there is for essentials for food it continues to be a very strong marketplace Shika, i want to ask you about a, the the real elephant in the room is liquidity yeah Did you see as an entrepreneur who works with msme and who's been an entrepreneur who understands money and the role of liquidity in in kind of oiling an economy where do you see the liquidity three to six months from now so, because I'm not an economist, one of the things I do is to go around talking to a lot of people and absorb like a sponge. And the best advice I've got is from someone who's a guru of strategy, 
Uh, he's a very accomplished professor and consultant in the US. Very simple argument. He said, only when people get back to work and starting start earning income, there will be money in the market. In order to get people back to work, you need to overcome a fear psychosis which prevails. Unfortunately, the fear psychosis will not go away till vaccines and treatments come uh, proven are proven. So he recommends two things actually. One, as individuals, all of us need to ensure that we do what we can, mask, social distancing, sanitizing, keep ourselves physically fit and support anyone around us who is poor and vulnerable. The government can ensure that you open the uh, economy, have a national mandate for mask and social distancing, ensure there's a safety net for the economically weaker section. When you do, if you do that over the next 60 days, and I'm confident that notwithstanding the small spikes in lockdown in Karnataka, et cetera, as we open up and people start figuring out that when I wear a mask and you also wear a mask, I'm not going to infect you, you're not going to infect me, we will start going back to work. All of us start earning, there will be liquidity. That money will get spent in the market. We will spend with Devashish on gaming. We will spend with Akshay on something else. And there will be liquidity in the market. So, so the government will hire people through him. You and Subara will, will hire people. Exactly. <laughs> that is a magical I answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very simple uh, yeah. and very no, straightforward. No, 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 they want to make more money. Uh, they spend, you know, because then they, the sentiment is better. And right now yeah. you're saying there is a fear factor of people going to offices, people going out to malls. Uh, I think there is a real fear factor, though the government has tried to do its best to deal with it, with the measures that you've described. Uh, I'd like to go back to Aditya. Aditya, you know, the traditional uh, saying was, roti kapra makan. Uh, you know, the government's sector is not doing well at all. It's just, the you know, more roti. I'm, you just shared about makan. But if... And, and internet probably. It's no, roti, internet, internet and Magana. Like internet has become like oxygen connected <laughs> with, with, with flexi working. I won't call it work from home. I'd call it flexi work. I think internet connecting has become like a lifeline. I mean, if Castaway was done uh, today, uh, it would need to have an internet connection. You know, Tom Hanks would possibly search for the biggest <laughs> Wi-Fi connection and then kind of find a way to be Castaway. But other thing, uh, coming back to the Indian economy, when you look at data, what is your forecast for the next six months? Because when you look at people inquiring for housing loans or actually actualizing housing loans, what is it that you are seeing? So again, I'm not an economist, but I can comment on the basis of the data that I see. And I think there are two sets of data that I see. One is a home loan data. Second is uh, the actual housing purchase data. So on the home loan side, I think the demand has shifted completely to home loan refinance. So there is a massive demand for somebody saying that, look, I am at eight and a half. Uh, the new guys are getting it at seven percent. Why shouldn't I refinance? So I think a large chunk of demand that we see right now, which is originating, is a big chunk is is actually just that. Uh, in fact, I talked with somebody at Mint on just this part where this entire process is running slow, but we expect to. Uh, speed that up. So to put numbers there, uh, I think uh, a lot of that movement is towards the PSU banks and HDFC and looks like more than 70% of what's hitting them is refinance and not really the uh, new lower purchase kind of product. Coming to the new purchase demand, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that if you look at the marketing sites, the traffic seems to have uh, bounced back. And Anurag uh, very correctly pointed out that, look, user back uh, doesn't mean revenue back. So if you look at uh, cost per lead, uh, cost per lead for a real estate developer or a broker had fallen by more than 50% in April. It is still down by around 20-25%. So it's not that you have a full recovery there. It's not as competitive as it used to be. Now, if I look at that uh, demand that's hitting the marketing site, is it coming to the developers? Answer is that there is a fair bit of lag. Uh, whether that lag is four weeks or eight weeks, I think time will tell us. But right now, if I look at it on a weekend on a weekend basis, when the lockdown ended here in Bombay, the next weekend was absolutely vacant. There was hardly anything happening at the sites. 
Uh, part of the reason is uh, customers don't want to come out and they're looking at digital channels. And I think the real estate developers have also responded by creating uh, a lot of digital channels. So if you look at, let's say, Peramal, they have launched the first of its kind, purely online experience. You can do a site visit. You can uh, figure out which flat you want to buy and completely buy it online. Uh, I was talking to the founders of the top three prop tech companies and they said between them in early June, they had done 7,000 sales of homes purely through virtual walkthroughs. Hmm. So, you know, they, they, they did share some data with me. What you're essentially saying is that there is a refinancing of existing home loans and there's some part of new demand. So, uh, clearly, you can't say that the demand is fully back. Uh, coming to you, uh, uh, Akshay, now, EdTech has created more digital divide than digital democratization. If I may say, if you look at Maharashtra schools, 92% of the Maharashtra schools till four weeks back uh, were not able to get their students, uh, you know, mm. to say virtual classes. So tell us uh, in future, do you see the digital divide getting bridged or do you see it getting wider? And, and, and if, if I can supplement that question, do you think that the government also had a vision about, uh, you know, involving the rural areas more when it comes to online education. Uh, what kind of role do you think that the government can play in that? You put me in a tough spot, Vineet. Uh, I'll come to the second part uh, in the latter part of the answer. Uh, but just to begin with, uh, I think, of course, uh, doing classes on Zoom is not the answer. It's not dead tech. Uh, just by having teachers uh, populate WhatsApp groups and mark attendance and uh, have uh, kids who don't have a computer at home, uh, who have one mobile device probably between two or three kids. I think that is not ethnic completely. Uh, that is definitely not the future of online education. So of course, uh, if we are to move to a more online, if I am to call that uh, future, we will have to reimagine it ground up. Uh, it cannot be uh, in the same way as it is right now. Uh, are we doing it right now? Uh, I don't know because uh, I, I'm not in that space. I'm not in online learning space probably. But uh, even when I see uh, big announcements from companies like uh, Reliance, uh, we hear the same thing that Zoom is doing with the GeoMeet. Uh, Reliance so, only does big announcement. You don't have to say Reliance and big announcement. <laughs> right? big announcement. I don't think you, you can... Yeah, okay, Anurag, we only have about seven minutes left on the show. So we'll also have to get to the rapid fire. Yeah, so so if, if, if you can expedite your answer... Okay. Sure. I'll just complete. I'll just complete the other part beneath. Uh, so yeah, I think I, I, from what I hear and the information that I have, stuff is happening in the tier four, tier five, tier six cities where uh, ground level talukas, district collectors, uh, district judges are essentially going out and distributing tabs, distributing mobile phones, and ensuring everybody can get education. Uh, that does not get covered in uh, our leading dailies and our news channels. So unfortunately, I think that news isn't there. Uh, but yes, of course, we are a very, very, very far distance away from there. And a lot more needs to be done by the government in that scenario. You know, what we need and me like, would like you to do is to ask each of you, where will the economy be in the next, 90, days. next three months? And we want a short answer. We'll start with you, Subara. Uh, will the economy be worse? Will it be better? Next three because, months. So because it's, 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 it's going to be a mixed bag. As I said, you know, certain segments are sort of started. I mean, I take yes, and for that. So give us a very definitive answer. Will it be worse in 90 days or better, or it'll stay tepid like now? I mean, uh, for the ni next 90 days, if we talk about pretty short term, I don't see any uh, great upswing coming on, though it will show some signs of it. Yeah. Thank you for the direct answer. Uh, Akshay, your response, economy in the next 90 days? Quick answer, quick answer. Things changing by the day. I think three months is a very long time. Things will improve drastically. I'm very optimistic about it. Don't be so and We still have five minutes, Akshay. We still have five minutes to the show. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, so no, I'm, I'm very optimistic about it. I think uh, I have seen in my space things changing. I've, I've seen the sentiment improving on an every week basis, uh, on an every month basis. So I see no, uh, I, I don't see a scenario where three months will pass off and we essentially won't make more progress. Also, the second part to it is that uh, uh, even if we, God forbid, don't find a vaccine or don't find enough medical solutions towards the current pandemic that we are in the middle of, I think... Uh, as a society, not just as Indians, I think globally, we have learned to live with the virus. Uh, you have seen uh, in the world of entertainment, that's I think what we began with. We have seen shooting started to happen. Uh, we have seen people suddenly get out. Uh, I'm sure. That's a sector that's ravaged. Our next cover is on that sector. So 
I have some idea of how badly it's done. A filmmaker is friend. But things moving very quickly. Coming back in a way. I'm, I'm very optimistic because because the, because the cinema halls are closed, so they said both at the supply side and the demand side it's impacted. Devashish, uh, your response on where the economy. I'll just I'll just make one I just I'll just make one oh, last uh, comment, uh, Anurag. This point, yeah, go ahead, Akshay. I'll just make uh, one last comment. I think uh, despite the fact that the economy will see an uptake and some will see a huge curve, some will see a V curve, of course, all of those things. uh but let's not forget the fact that some things will remain changed forever uh and the nature of work will completely change so i don't see remote work completely going out i see probably office, people going to office say three times in a day and saying that hey probably this, this meeting can happen over a zoom so th- some things are definitely changed forever and i think that's better those have been accelerated that progress for human kind has been accelerated uh yeah if absolutely the progress <laughs> if you call it a progress we believe you some things of it are definitely are devashish economy in the next 90 days very definitive answer no hedging okay sure uh, so i think it, next 90 days is going to be july like i'm sitting in july right now and it's still going to be july uh, the congestion is more in the internet i think it's just like the old landline connections like you need to fix all those things and we can move faster that's all what i believe because what you're saying don't... in 90 days the economy won't improve is that what you're saying yes sir it's going to be july and i just need a 5g connection keep coming the, up next keep the score will prevail guy three same thing as <laughs> Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think it is going to be status quo in the next three months at least. But post that, hopefully, we'll see some revival in certain sectors. This is kind of an invitation for disruption, and this is, um, you know, the new normal is inviting a lot of different types of businesses to come up and emerge very strong. However, unfortunately, most of the largest um, players on the market across industries have taken a terrible hit and job loss is just too tremendous to be able to see any significant revival in the next 3 months at least yeah no, no, no. i second what gayatri has just said okay status quo aditya the next 3 to 6 months i think are going to be a struggle just the way the last 3 months have been 3 to 6 6 months, months in december we would have 14 november used to be uh, is now diwali i mean also happened to children's day Uh, uh so you're saying in december till december it won't improve no i think this will improve but we'll continue to struggle we'll continue to struggle this is a lot of hard work ahead of all of us who are running businesses uh but will it be better than what it is yes but will it be back to where we were let's say in jan and feb that's sometime away and what is that sometime that's what i'm saying that uh, look at around november december for that to happen Okay, Shikant, uh, you have the. You started with you. We sure. have. So Anurag, you said during the break that this is a panel of optimists. So I'm going to stick true to to that promise. <laughs> I believe that India makes the most progress when there's a crisis, and this crisis will create a cadre of world-beating companies from India. And I see it in three sectors: edtech, medtech, and e-commerce. Where I'm advising a company each. It's not going to happen by magic. These companies have to be agile and aggressive. the companies i advise do a daily zoom review and i'm seeing the progress every day i think we're going to create a cadre of world beating companies and i can see some of them on this call itself so i'm totally optimistic anurag let's also get your point of view on this like we always do anurag thank you i i just would like to say that i believe that i believe in the power of india i believe in the power of indian entrepreneurs pivoting we have always created more out of less whether it was in ancient times or now so i think uh, uh, as this in necessity is the mother of invention we will be more innovative than other but i agree with the panel mostly i don't see the economy improving over the next 6 months substantially around diwali there may be some demand coming back uh, not to the level it comes back in a diwali normally but i think over the next 12 18 months oh, we'll start going back to the kind of numbers that we've never seen or imagined yeah. because in, intrinsically india will become the center of the world for commerce and i want to say this and we will debate this on our show that the prime minister vision of making let's say uh, a, a certain place in gujarat the new financial hub of the world which he started 6 years back uh, possibly will happen because there is a china phobia in the world there is a china phobia in the world and rightly so i think india will be will be benefiting from it all right on, all on, yours on that optimistic and positive note i'd like to thank everyone for being a part of this you. wonderful thank you. thank you so much thank, thank, you. thank you yeah thank you very much hope thank you, you. It was a pleasure thank you Bye.